Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, bringing you another Warhammer 40k painting tutorial. This time we will be tackling the new Elusha Vane miniature from the Kill Team Rogue Trader box set. And as always, we'll be using the Citadel range of paints to do so. Before we can begin painting, we first of all need to prime. I like to use a grey primer for this task, as it works as a good base coat to build upon for other lighter and darker colours. You can use any miniature suitable grey primer for this that you have to hand. I've also only partly assembled the miniature and I have attached the head and left arm to a length of wire. Keeping these components separate makes painting those tricky areas much easier. The first step in painting Alusha is to paint her skin and for this we'll be using Bugman's Glow. However, before applying the paint, we first of all want to water it down slightly. Thinning out the paint will not only make it easier to work with, but if we apply a couple of coats, we'll be left with a much smoother finish. So take your paint and mix it with an equal amount of water. When painting miniatures, I like to work from the inside out by painting the more recessed areas before tackling the parts on the outer limits of the miniature. By painting this way, we can avoid accidentally overspilling onto areas that have already been covered when trying to get to those hard to reach areas. So with this in mind, use your thinned Bugman's Glow to give all the flesh a good solid color, applying several coats to ensure the best coverage. At the moment, Alusha's skin is looking a little too dark and flat, but we can fix this with a layer of Cadian Flesh Tone. However, before we apply the paint, we first want to mix it with some Lamia Medium in equal parts. Apply your mixture to the more prominent features such as the fingers and shoulder blades, leaving the darker Bugwin's glow visible in the recesses. After the first coat has dried, apply a second layer, but instead apply your paint to a slightly smaller area than before. This layering technique, combined with the thinning that we did with Lamia Medium, will help to create a smoother and more realistic looking transition between the darker Bugwin's Glow and the lighter Cadian Flesh Tone. The next areas to base coat are the skirt and the wax seal on the scroll, and for these we'll be using Mephiston Red, mixed with some water in a much the same way that we used the Bugwin's Glow earlier. As the red is quite a prominent focal point of the miniature, we're going to be putting in an extra step here. Using Evilson Scarlet mixed with Lamia Medium, we'll be employing a similar technique to one we used with the Cadian Flesh Tone. Apply the first layer of your Lamia Medium Thin Paint to the slightly more raised parts of the skirt, such as the left thigh and also the creases just below the right hand. Make sure the darker Mephiston Red remains visible in those recesses. Once your first layer has dried, remember to apply a second coat, slightly reducing the area you are covering with your paint. To paint the corset, we'll be using a base coat of Screamer Pink. For the lace areas of the miniature, we want to give them a slightly purplish hue. We can achieve this by using a base coat of Slanesh Grey. Now this paint isn't a base paint, so you may need to apply an extra layer in order to get a good, even coverage. For the brown leather and the hair on Alicia, we will be applying some Dryad Bark. The next area to paint are the black leather boots, pistol handle and also the cane. For these, we will be using a base coat of Abaddon Black. To paint the feathers in the hat, we will be using Warpstone Glow. Again, this isn't a base paint, so apply a couple of layers for that even coverage. The final area to paint before we move on to the metallics is the parchment of the scroll. This area will be base coated with Rakar Flesh. The next few steps will involve painting the metallic areas and we'll be starting off with the bronze coloured parts. These include the armour, the trim of the cane and the pistol, the hat, the metal piping along the corset and boots, as well as the tank on the back. For all of these areas, we'll be using Balthazar Gold. The second metallic paint to use is Retributor Armour, and we'll be using this to paint the gold trim on the skirt. The final metal base coat is Lead Balcher, and this will be applied to all of the silver metallic areas. This includes the Aquila symbol, the monocle, the pistol, and finally the small skulls on the hat and the boots. Before we progress to the washers, we next want to paint the glowing blue areas on the tank, and for this, we'll be using Thousand Suns Blue. However, before you begin the step, thoroughly clean out your paint, water and brushes to prevent any cross-contamination of metal flakes into your other paint and washes. With all the base coats completed, we can now begin applying some washes. These will flow into the recessed areas of the miniature, which will help to create depth and improve the miniature's level of detail. The first wash for this is Agrax Earthshade, and this will be applied over the bronze, red, brown and parchment parts of the miniature. 
When applying washes, I like to mix in a little Lamia medium to reduce the strength of the wash. This is entirely optional, but I find it results in a much smoother transition between the darker and lighter areas. For the corset, we'll be applying a wash of Drucci Violet, which will help to maintain that deep purple colour. The wash that we'll be applying to both the skin and the gold areas will be Reichland Flesh Shade. The final wash to apply is one of Non Oil. This will be applied to the silver, blue and green areas of the miniature. If you're using some Lamia Medium, you can also apply this wash to the lace areas to create some very subtle shading in the recesses. Once the washes have dried, we can then start with our highlights. I will be starting with a highlight to the red areas using Wild Rider Red. To do this, take a brush with a fine point and dip it into some slightly watered down paint. Then use this brush to paint on a thin line along the raised edges. This will help to create depth in the miniature and really help to bring out those details. Next, we'll be picking out the knuckles of the fingers using Flayed One Flesh. Finish off the purple colour of the corset with a highlight of Pink Horror. For the lace areas, you can use some white scar to pick out those raised edges. We will then be applying an edge highlight of Gawthor Brown to the brown areas, before picking out the raised edges of the feathers in the hat and the gem in the corset using Moot Green. For the black areas, we'll be starting off with a regular edge highlight of Dark Reaper. Then we can apply what I call an extreme highlight of Thunderhawk Blue. Follow the same principle as before, but only apply this highlight to the more prominent edges, such as corners and other sharp points. To paint the edges of the parchment, we'll be using a Shabti Bone. Before we start on highlighting the metallic areas, apply a thin line of Temple Guard Blue to the glowing blue sections of the tank. To highlight the bronze areas of the miniature, we'll be using Hash Hut Copper. The final step in painting Alusha Vane is to highlight the gold and silver areas using Stormhost Silver. This will create the effect of light shining off the edges of these metallic areas. And here we have the completed Alusha Vane. I finish things off by varnishing and assembling the components before creating a simple basing scheme using some textured paint and some static grass. You can find a full list of all the paints that I've used in this tutorial in the description below, along with any other equipment I've used to create this video, such as my Everlasting Wet Palette. If you enjoyed this video, do let me know in the comments below, and if you haven't done so already, be sure to check out my Patreon page if you would like to support me in making these videos. If you have any questions or would just like to chat with others who enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server which you can find a link to in the description below. And so the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching, and goodbye.